This is the new Aston Martin DB12, and it could just be the most important car for Aston Martin in its recent history. DB12 is the beginning of an entirely new era for Aston, and while the jaw-droppingly stunning exterior is still every bit as familiar as generations gone by, it is perhaps what's underneath that really changes the game. So, do you know what I did half expect? I don't know why I wasn't expecting it to be DB12. I thought, yeah. I thought there might have been a sort of heavy facelift, but it is an entirely new car. Yeah, so over 80% new. Um, yeah. Very little has carried over at all. Um, massive step forward in, in every dimension. So yeah, new name, new name for the car. It's such a sort of top line basic observation, but it looks awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it, it looks it's really, really good. It's really taken a huge leap forward. The stance uh, yeah. is different. Um, the, 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 the track is wider front and rear. Um, so you just get this overall much more powerful impression than the so, DB11. So, so by coincidence and good timing, I stepped out of DBS 770 last week. I mean, talk about a case of something being greater than the sum of its parts. Driving that, even that felt like a different car versus DBS. Yeah. How much of the sort of development and learning from that car has been filtered into this? Because that thing drove fantastically well. Yeah, it's, it's all, it's part of a huge step across each introduction. So even if you look at DBX 707, uh -huh. just transformed DBX, yes. we've put almost entirely new suspension and underpinnings on that. Um, you know, V12 Vantage and then into DBS 770. So major focus on, on performance driving and engagement. So the brand's always had kind of beautiful style and lots of power. The key is, can you get it down? Yeah. And can you enjoy it? And I think DBS 770s are our best yet, our best execution of that. Mm -hmm. Really sharp front end, recalibrated transmission and power delivery, and then a, a super stable rear. So you can really, really fling the car out of corners yeah. and have some fun. We take that on a whole new level with, with DB12 as well. Fantastic. So one of the things I was really impressed with, I'm not sure what sort of witchcraft you used on the calibration of the gearbox, but it's probably the closest automatic I felt to a twin clutch box. It's like yeah. lightning fast. Is that similar calibration in this? Yeah, and we take it a step further here. So there's a, a much higher level of engagement on downshift. So you really feel, feel the, feel the uh, ratios changing. Torque shaping is something you felt in the DBS yes. 770. So each ratio has its own torque curve. That allows you really to attack. And, yes. and get the power down out and the torque out of the, out of the corners. Uh -huh. And particularly makes it a great kind of B-road, mountain switchback kind of car as well, which yes. previously our cars weren't so, particularly in wet conditions and so on, uh -huh. couldn't get the power down as well. So we take that on again with, with DB12. So really super engaging transmission. So no V12 anymore, only V8, but horsepower wise, we're 680 PS, which translates to about 671 horsepower. Yes and presumably less cylinders, less weight. Yeah, absolutely. So we're over 100 kilos lighter than the original DB11 V12 at launch. So wow. massive weight That's huge. gain um, wow. in terms of, of that front end. It's much more agile. The other aspect of the V8 is the way it picks up. So this, this new V8 um, that we, we've tuned specifically, it's much faster to spool up. So the, it's got all new um, turbos on it, so it's, it's much faster to rev up, so it, it feels more naturally aspirated. Um, okay. And you get a really responsive kick, particularly mid corners, you can drive it on the throttle. Brilliant. Um, so hence why, with that level of power uh -huh. from a V8, no V12 necessary on, on DB12. Dynamics, new Bilstein, and it's their trick stuff, right? Yeah, so we've, <laughs> we've, gone, we've gone very, very big on the, on the suspension changes. So yeah, new system, on the car, um, Bilstein DTX, six-way sensors as opposed to four-way on the previous system, so much more information being processed. The reason for it is really at the core of where the brand is going, and that's much greater breadth in the mm -hmm. overall dynamics of the car. So it has to ride like an Aston. You have to be able to spend time in the car, go long sure. distance, and feel, feel like you can enjoy it. But at the other end, you take it into Sport Plus, and it is super sharp, beautifully balanced. There's lots of feedback. And the other part of the, the integration of the system is the way the ESP, the ABS, mm -hmm. traction control and uh, the, the EDIF, they come together in a way that they're helping, but you don't feel it. And so it's a really natural 
way to drive the car at, at speed, get a bit of slip, get a bit of yaw into the into the corners, yeah. but not feel like it's intruding and, and managing you all the time. So I guess the, those extra two sensors, having six instead of four, is that to analyze and read things like pitch and yaw? Pitch and yaw, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. And the more information you can get, the subtler the changes you can make through the system. So the driver's not feeling it. Mm -hmm. They feel like they're a hero. Sure. but actually they're being helped slightly as they, as they step out. Yes. So it's a really, really clever and very advanced um, system for us. Massive intake now. I mean, yep. not, obviously it looks super cool, but I'm assuming that is also a genuine practical engineering thing. Yeah, allowing him exactly. Out. Yeah, so we've obviously got the main rater and we've got auxiliary radiators either side. So we've got these intakes on the outer flanks of the car. Mm -hmm. um, lots more cooling required. So we've put yeah. um, double cooling pack on each side and that's really the extra wow. power we've got uh -huh. at 680, but then also cooling uh, transmission and uh, HVAC as well. So yeah, big opening required and really also an opportunity to put a really kind of assertive, confident mm -hmm. face on the car. Yes. Uh, everything's raised up. The new DRLs are, are much more aggressive. Um, so it's beautiful like an Aston should be, but it's got far more road presence when you yeah. see it in the rear view mirror. The crease lines and forms in the bonnet are unbelievably stunning. I'm not sure if the camera's doing it justice. The sculpture of it is outstanding. Nerdy little oh. detail. The OCD in me, you'll walk over to a beautiful fascia and then you opt for this, which is your sort of cruise control, adaptive lane assist, things like that. All of that, yeah. All of that jazz is sort of behind here. And I don't know whether, what it is with a lot of brands. I'll have a beautiful fascia like this and I'll just whack it here or yeah. offset or not centrally. So a bit of a nerdy detail, but I'm really glad you actually care yeah. about that. <laughs> Design is obsessive at Aston <laughs> yeah. and yeah. we had a chance here to, to, to have that clean sheet. So yeah, and, and knowing all the, the new ADAS features on this program. So it was integrated centrally uh -huh. and we agree, we're OCD about that as well. Good. So yeah, it's a, it's a nice place to put it. And of course, when the license plate goes on, you hardly notice it sure. at all. And I'm a right in thinking, is this the first Aston with the new badge on it? Yes. Uh, effectively. First Aston with the new wings, mm -hmm. um, a much bolder, cleaner execution of the logo. And yeah, it's the first of, you know, the next generation of sports cars from us. And it's the big badge that was originally on DBX. Yes. It's a substantial much wing bolder. set. Much bolder. Fantastic. Yeah. So something I'm really passionate about, and this is again, really nerdy, You've got some really fancy, specifically developed Michelin tires on this now. Yes. For the driver and anyone watching this, having a fresh set of Michelin Pilot Sport, these are the fives too, which yes. are the latest version. Very latest, yeah. But I've also noticed having the AML inscribed would suggest that this is a compound for you. Yes. Which is awesome. Yeah, so this has been a, a bespoke tire program together with the development of the car. So, um, and we're really excited to have the, the, mm -hmm. the the PS5s on there, it's, it's a real, real step forward. Um, huge amount of difference that a tire can make, particularly when you've got this much torque going down, yeah. but also a really kind of stiff front, uh, front end for that, that steering feel off center. Yeah. Um, it's a much stiffer tire than we've previously used on the side. Right. So then you allow the dampers to take out that harshness, but what you get is a really responsive mm. turn in without any harshness. It's Fantastic. a brilliant tire. Fantastic. Option carbon ceramics. Um, standard okay. on, on the normal uh, steel, steel brakes. Right. Um, and that really, again, covers the, <laughs> the breadth of customer we have on this car as well. Sure. Um, more and more with the power, we're seeing carbon ceramics. The wing mirror itself adjusts on a, like a sort of ball joint rather than the glass itself? Yeah, exactly. So this is, a, this is a, again, a first for us, but it, it gives a super clean look. The aesthetic is beautiful. Wing mirror. Yeah. It looks like a concept wing mirror. Yes. But that is a pr production. Yeah, absolutely. This is production. So the whole case moves around uh, on, a, on a junction and then the glass inside stays still. Look how, how flush that all is compared to a normal wing where you could, you'd have that glass sort of recessed inside this clunky plastic surround. But that's the first time I've seen that. Yeah. Super trick. Yeah, no, it's, it's super cool. And again, part of the obsessive design-led mm -hmm. uh, approach as well to the exterior. Plenty of front end grip. E-diff, first yeah. time. Um, and really that's, again, something we, we had on um, Vantage in the past, but not on DB11 playing mm -hmm. to the different character. Yes. With a much more performance focused um, setup on this car, EDIF really just helps us get that power down, particularly, you know, coming out of corners mm -hmm. um, and, and allowing the car to, to do its thing, having a bit more fun, a bit more control with the right foot 
Yes. Um, sure. and, and, you know, ultimately, it, it, it really is an incredibly quick point to point car as a result. Yeah, I it's bet. also great on the track. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. Really, really Mega. flat, balanced. Wow. Um, it's Super quite cool. kind of thrilling to drive. I mean, really, just those two changes alone outside of the Bilsteins, an e-diff and revised torque profiling should be a game changer in yeah. terms of actually applying power down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fabulous. Big, big step. The newly revised 4-litre twin-turbo V8 develops a class-leading 671 brake horsepower and 590 pounds-feet of torque. Connected to a recalibrated ZF 8-speed automatic gearbox and a 100kg diet compared to the outgoing DB11, allows DB12 to accelerate from 0 to 62 miles an hour in just 3.5 seconds with a top speed of 202 miles per hour. Right, so, I know it's beautiful and I know it'll go like hell and you've got fancy suspension and all that jazz, but this, <laughs> let's face it, is what it's all about. So I've been waiting to do this for some time. Look at that. <laughs> Alex, look at this. Finally. Finally, brilliant. Evidently, we have Apple CarPlay integration here. I think it's important as well at this stage to stress that this is very much a pre-production car. So that there are some finer details, which I think will be upgraded when it hits the road, but we're here. All new infotainment, touchscreen. The journey for you guys on this has been long, right? It has, yeah. So this is, this is a single major investment that we've made um, to go cross car line mm -hmm. into the future. DB12 is the first car that introduces it. Um, it's a big investment for Aston Martin as a company to take a, our destiny in our own hands with respect to HMI. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a key interface with the driver, the appearance of it, the graphics, the, yeah. the fonts, the, the speed it works at, um, and crucially, obviously, the ergonomics, the touchscreen um, yes. was something we urgently needed across the range. So we, we took a big leap and we've developed a system here that will take us into the future. Yeah. So historically, there was some part sharing. Now, this is very much your own IP, your own brand, the touch feel. I mean, even things that what I love too, I'm sure there was an urge or there is a trend in the industry right now of just going screen, right? Fantastic to have some tactile, just straight to the point buttons. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, we could be reaching peak screen quite soon <laughs> in the industry. Um, yeah. But for us as a, as a kind of ultra luxury manufacturer, we wanted to integrate the technology in a way that still lets you know you're sitting inside a very special mm -hmm. cabin, a very special product. So, um, you know, milled from solid switches, beautifully weighted interaction, direct action with things like HVAC and drive mode. So you don't have to go into sub menus. Brilliant. Um, so on the move, really, really nice to use, but also a nice experience, nice feel. So you, you have the high technology connected car, everything you would expect, mm -hmm. but it's subtly integrated. One thing I'm picking up on immediately, the response of the screen is, is almost like iPhone itself. It's so it, immediate, super crisp. Yeah, yeah, this is one of the, the, the dangers in creating a touchscreen system is the speed of response and people get frustrated, press two, three times for the same action. Mm -hmm. So when we're putting this together, we looked at the loading you can get, if I can get nerdy for a moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when you are driving, you tend to, you, you're navigating, you connect a phone, maybe you're playing media as well and, and mm -hmm. other functions, and you're loading up uh, the processors. Mm. So what we did on this program was said, okay, we're gonna fit a chip that's effectively twice as powerful as it'll ever need to be to run all the systems. So whatever you load it with, the speed of response is instant and consistent. So it's a really high specification system in behind that's operating it. It's running both screens, so mm -hmm. it needs to be very, very powerful in order to give that user experience that says this is quick and easy. I know I've taken action. I've pressed something and it's given me an immediate response. Um, and you know, is our first step with a touchscreen. We had to absolutely nail the usability and the speed. Sure. And, and we've done that. Continuing the theme of nerding. Um, and this is a really small detail, but it's, again, something I've not seen done yet. Most integrations with CarPlay, you have to read the map here, which is okay, but not always ideal. You've managed to split it so that on your nav, you can have it here. 
Yes. Small detail, but wicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, really so, helpful. Again, this is the benefit of taking it in our own hands, our mm -hmm. own destiny. So um, these are the kind of details you drive lots and lots of competitor cars, benchmark and so on, and you just say, wouldn't it be cool if... Yes. And then fill the gaps, and that was one of them. Really, I've always wondered why no one's done it. You could get their inbuilt proprietary nav there, but mm -hmm. never a third-party one. Yeah, yeah, and here you can have both. You can have either. Just awesome. And then things which are hard to convey on camera, but the weighting and, and feel of the switch gear, super yeah. on point. But when it comes to, to getting the weighting right, this is... Uh, an unbelievable amount of hours playing with an unbelievable <laughs> amount imagine. of calibrations <laughs> yeah. until you get that feel of, I want to take a positive action, particularly on drive mode, because it's a big thing to do. You know, I want sure. to go up into sport. Mm -hmm. That means a lot of changes to the way the car's going to handle. I want it to be a really positive decision. Uh, but also just accessing the HVAC and the volume for the, uh, the media. It's, mm. it's a really lovely thing to press. You just find yourself sort of hovering over the switch yes. uh, again and again. So it's, all of that is all about the driving experience. You know, being inside an Aston Martin has to be special every journey. This isn't final spec, I think. No. I'm told this will either be knurled or... Yeah, depending on option. Leather yeah. or something like that. So this will be like that. metal as per these switches and so on. Yeah. Very cool. Well, mate, I can't wait to drive this thing. I cannot wait. I mean, if it's anything like DBS 770 with all of this new tech, all of a sudden it's right up there with best in segment, isn't it? We're pretty confident it will be. We've put a lot of time and effort into the, the performance, the, the dynamics, mm -hmm. particularly as a, as, a, as a future pillar of our brand. Um, we know other GT products out there. That's mm -hmm. why we're calling it a Super Tourer, because mm -hmm. we think it's beyond that. Right. We think it gives the best of the ride and serenity of a GT, but on a point-to-point -point and a switchback, it's just best in class. I can't wait for you to drive it. Brilliant. Thanks a lot.